So hi everybody, how's it going? Today we're talking about a different type of topic. I'm doing something more on the motivational side of things. We're talking today about something very, very important. I'm going to try to give it the seriousness it deserves because, you know, I'm a bubbly person. I always have, you know, positive thoughts. I'm always making light of things, you know, even serious things. But I'm going to give this topic the seriousness it deserves while still staying true to my own personality. So we're talking about what to do when you feel like you want to quit. So what to do when you feel like you want to quit. And that's very important, right? Because so many people struggle with this, guys. This is something that people struggle with. Oh, <laughs> there's my dog. He's having a go at a new treat I bought him. So he's like super excited about it. Look at him go. So he'll just be hanging out there for now, if he so chooses. Sometimes he just runs around and he has this ball that drives me nuts. The ball is like rattling and just shaky, shaky. And I'm like, ugh. But he loves the ball so much, I got to let him go. So hopefully he'll be okay sitting and eating his new treat while we do this video. So we're talking about what to do when you feel like you want to quit. And it's an important topic because so many people feel this way. And not just in business analysis careers, but like everybody who's working. People always have, I want to quit at the top of their tongue. They just, it's just always in the forefront of your mind. Okay. Should I quit? Just quit. Just, whatever is the problem, I'm quitting. You know, <laughs> that happens a lot with a lot of people. But before you quit, I have a few things I want to talk to you about. Okay. First of all, is the job worth it to you? Is the job worth it? And what does worth it mean? For some people, it means it's a prestigious company. It has a good reputation. It's going to help my career move forward. Um, I like what I'm doing, you know, I get good compensation. Like, what does it mean to be worth it? Is the job worth it to you? You're going through stress right now. You're going through frustration right now. And you really, you really, you feel like you want to quit because of what's going on right now. But is the job itself, outside of this frustration, is the job worth it? If the job is not worth it, then quitting is the easier option for you. Because if, if it's not worth it, meaning that, you're not getting paid enough. The company doesn't really have the kind of structure that you want. Like there's so many reasons that it could not be worth it for you. If it is not worth it, then you definitely have an easier way to just hightail it out of there. But if it's worth it, then you have to think through some other things, right? So are you doing something that you love or something that you think you can grow to love? So how do you feel about what you're doing? Right. And then that's going to lead you to thinking through what is really causing you to want to quit. I know you had this discussion with someone and they said something that you didn't like. And, you know, you might be doing some processes that you don't agree with. And the executive leadership is taking direction that you don't know if that's what you should be doing. And there's all these things. But you are a business analyst. And so I'm not talking to the average person here. I'm talking to above average intelligence analytical thinkers who are super good at understanding high level and intricate details, who are super good at understanding the current state and the future states. I'm talking to very, very intelligent people. And so when I ask what is really making you want to quit, it's for you to apply the same business analysis skills that you apply externally to the products you're working on and apply it to yourself and say, what is making me feel this way? What is making me have this incessant just need to just go? And if I can narrow that down to something, not just someone, but something, maybe that can give me some more insight as to what I should be doing and help me to make a better decision, right? So sometimes the things that are causing you to want to quit are the people. No brainer there. The majority of people who quit their jobs is because of their managers. Their managers are driving them nuts. They have unrealistic expectations. The direction they're taking them through is not good. There's multiple levels of approvals, lots of rework. And it's just frustrating working with these people. 
personality is not good and they don't communicate things that they should they don't tell you what's going on you kind of left out in the wilderness trying to figure out what they decided to do and yet you're expected to, to deliver and you're like why am i living like this what's my life why is my work life like this i shouldn't have to go through this and i should just quit which is what most people think, right? So is it the people that's causing you to want to quit? And if it's the people causing you to want to quit, are you able to change who those people are? Can you work on a different project? Can you go to a different department? Is there anything you can do within your control to alleviate this pain right now? You know, um, obviously I know you'd have thought about that because you're a business analyst, you're above average intelligence analytical person. So I'm just speaking to the choir right here. I'm preaching to the choir, but I thought I'd say it. The other thing that could cause you to want to quit is the process. You just don't agree with the process. You don't think that this is the process that we should be doing. And being a process person yourself and being able to improve processes for other departments and other people, when you see your own project process or your own product management process, like not right, you're like, hmm, I'm over there trying to help people make their process right, but our internal process is not right. And I'm struggling with the process that I'm in when I'm supposed to be helping other people make better processes. Something right here, right? So <laughs> that causes a lot of frustration, especially when you are the person doing the thing and somebody else is making decisions about the thing you're doing, but they haven't had the experience of doing the thing that you're doing, but they're making decisions about it. So they haven't, because you're a business analyst, these things are more irksome to you because you know what should be done. You know you have to empathize with the customer or with the user or the end the person's going to consume your end result right so when you have to do that for your work and yet still within the team that you're working with they're not doing that for you so the people above you are making decisions about what you do but they haven't had a day in your in your shoes and so <laughs> you're like this is not how you do a process okay this is you don't just dictate a process and say here go do it you don't even know the problem you're solving. You don't even know what the root causes are. You haven't done any analysis. And that's why I always suggest that leaders, all executives should be business analysts in some way because they need to understand the root causes and they need to understand markets and trends and all these other things and be able to apply that to different teams that they work with. But I, I digress. The point is that you, you're frustrated with the process and you maybe try to change it, try to influence upward and you can't get that influence and you just feel like it's being dictated down to you and you don't want to get on board with something that's kind of not taking the right direction that you think you should be going. But again, processes change, priorities change. Um, sometimes you let the process run its course and when it doesn't work, you can, in your self, you say, I told you so. I knew, I knew it. But you could say, right now, they're not doing it the way I know it needs to be done, so let me quit. Or you could say, let me try. Have you tried the new thing? I mean, you know it's probably not perfect, but have you even given it a try? You have to give it a try so you can, you can, you can know that it really didn't work because you too tried it, as opposed to, I'm not even going to try it, and, and I know it's not going to work, and then you kind of sabotage it, right? So... Have you really given it a try? The other thing that people might be frustrated with is the tasks, and that links to the process. You don't like the task you're doing. For example, you get hired as a business analyst, and you expect to be doing licitation and stakeholder interviews, and you're writing requirements, documents, and user stories, and you're coming up with features and doing ideation sessions. That's what you signed up for. You get in there, and you find yourself doing support. You're supporting the technology, and you're not coming up with any ideas and the ideas are being handed down to you already done and you're just documenting stuff and you're not using your analytical skills and you're like I'm an above average valuable professional I'm not using any of my intelligence here I'm just like a scribe just writing stuff <laughs> I'm like a tech support I'm like you know or you could be doing something like okay I want to do um you know, I want to have more influence on the, the decisions that are being made because, you know, I want to do more elicitation, all that stuff. And I find myself writing SQL queries. So I'm just querying data all day, querying data, querying data. And then I pass that data to somebody else who decides how to use it. I'm like, but I'm just I'm like a programmer almost like I'm not doing, I'm not doing business analysis, am I? I want to quit. <laughs> 
So, I mean, these are things that happen to people and they really feel the frustration here. And that's why you want to quit because the task you're doing is not what you signed up for. And you're not happy, right? I get it. I really do. The other thing is, you know, the norm, money. I'm not being paid what I know I deserve. I deserve to be paid more. I see jobs out there on LinkedIn where people are doing the exact same thing and they're getting ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars more than me. And I deserve more and I'm just gonna quit. That happens too. So I will say that you need to make sure you're not running away from the problem because you're gonna come up with problems wherever you go. So if you're going to a new company because you don't like particular thing or that people, you're gonna find people that you don't like there too. And you're gonna find the processes that don't right, work right either there. And the money you look, you make now that you think, okay, just gonna raise and you're happy with that. In a few years, you're gonna be like, I don't wanna be making this money, I wanna jump. So uh, even a few months, you, you might not even take years. So money can always be a motivation for sure. By the way, that's my dog. <laughs> my dog is just jumping around. I think he's having the treat or he's with his ball. Oh my goodness, the ball again. And every time I see him playing with the ball, I'm a little scared because the ball is noisy, it's rackety. And it has a little ball inside and shake, shake, shake. And he loves that. He loves to see it shake. But he just makes a lot of noise with it. Jackson, come here, baby. Leave that ball alone, okay? My big son. <laughs> My son. Leave the ball alone, okay, baby? Good doggy. Good boy. Good mommy love you so much. Mm. Yeah, you're a jumper. Come here, come here, boy. How are you? Okay. Okay. Look, everybody. Yes. Yes, my Jackson, my Jackson. You okay, Baba? Good doggy. Good doggy. All right. Now, mommy got to finish this video, okay? Mommy got to finish the video, so you got to go down. Okay. Good boy. Don't make noise with that ball. Oh, my God. I know he don't tear up the house. <laughs> Whenever you give him a little bit of love, he just wants more and more. I cannot keep him happy. Look at him now. Jumping around. See what I mean? Completely excited now. Look at him. Look at him. And him and the ball. Him and the ball again. Jackson, come here. Give me that ball. This is the ball that he loves. It has this rackety thing in the middle. That just makes nothing but noise. But he loves this ratchety old ball and I can't get rid of the ball. So I'm gonna put the ball over here, baby. And you're gonna stay and not make any noise, okay? Look at him. You already... <laughs> Look at this dog. Come here, baby. Come, come and get it. Come and get it. Yeah, come and get it. <laughs> Look, I want to finish this video, okay? We're talking about something serious. We can't be laughing like this on a serious topic like this. Yes, you go over there and sit. Good dog. All right, so don't just run away, right, from the problem. And also don't let anybody push you out. Sometimes new people come in with their new ideas and new things and they just like go off and off and then you just feel like you're, you've been there long enough doing all this stuff and somebody new comes in and all of a sudden they have all the influence and everybody's like, yeah, it's a great idea and start following what they're doing and kind of pushing you further and further in the back. This happens too, and you feel like, okay, so I, I, I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything then. I'm like, I'm, I don't have any value now. All of a sudden, okay, well, bye. And you want to quit, but remember that I'm going to tell you if nobody's told you, you are absolutely valuable. What you bring to the table as a business analyst, you make it look easy. You make it look easy because you apply the skills and the techniques. And so they see the end result that looks easy, but they don't know the work it took to get to that effort to be able to do it so well that nobody even realizes it's been done well because it's flawless. You are valuable and you are you and there's only one of you. And when you go to their job, you bring yourself to it and you bring your personality to it. And there can only be one person like you to do it the way you do it. It's immensely valuable and what you apply to your projects is priceless. And they don't say to you, they don't mention it, don't even recognize it, but I'm telling you that you have to have that internal motivation because you know that what you bring is immensely valuable. And so nobody can just push you aside and push you out. 
Okay, nobody can just push you out like that because you know in yourself that your value doesn't depend on the success of the project. Your value as a professional, you are an above average, intelligent, analytical, valuable person. And you're a professional and you know what you're doing. And so you don't need to feel defeated or that you have been set aside or that you're you're not valuable because you know from yourself. You don't need somebody to tell you. It's not outside. You don't need somebody to tell you that. You know it. You know it. And you walk with that confidence, girl, or men. You walk with that confidence, people, because you know you have it and you know you can do it. And if they don't recognize it, that's fine. But you recognize it for yourself. You have it in you. Okay? So don't ever let that be um, something you internalize. If you have to quit, you quit, but don't internalize that you're not valuable because you are, you are, you really are. Okay. So just know that. The other thing about thinking it through quitting is what is your actual end goal? What are you trying to work towards? So for me personally, I have 10 year goals and we just started a new decade in 2020. So I have my 2020, 2030 goals. So I normally have a 10 year goal a five-year goal, a one-year goal. And I'm working every day towards my one-year goal that will get to my five-year goal, which will get to my 10-year goal. And some of these, the 10-year goals are like big, big things that I have no idea how I'm going to accomplish, <laughs> right? It's like a challenge for me to get there. Five-year goals are a little bit more accomplishable and one-year goals are definitely like tactical, tactical stuff. But they all align. So if you're quitting your job, is the move going to help you get to the goal? that you have. Some people have a goal to have their own business. Some people have a goal to accomplish certain things with their family or personal things. I don't know. The people have their goals for different reasons. But if you shift your job, is that going to help you get to that goal? And you want to make sure you're moving towards the goal at all times, right? Um, making sure that it aligns is very important. So you don't want to make moves that are not helping, right? Like if you're trying to become a senior business analyst or you're trying to get into um a particular you know vertical or industry then moving to something else just because it pays you more may not be even though you get more money doesn't need to align with your goal so are you are you really going forward or are you going backward you got to think about that so there are benefits to quitting and there are benefits to staying i want to talk to you about both so when you quit your job you just get this this breath of fresh air <laughs> You know, you just, you're starting something new. You, you definitely get rid of the old problem. The number one benefit to quitting your job is to get rid of the immediate pain. To get rid of the immediate problem that you have. And to start something fresh. And that's why I say to you, you need to think about if your job is worth it. Because if the reason you want to quit is because something happened yesterday or somebody said something to you. Uh, in a meeting and it's just so irksome to you and so bothersome to you and so stressful to you and so frustrating to you that you want to just leave then you gotta you gotta think about that because that might just be in the moment that this happens so don't make a permanent decision for a temporary situation don't make a decision that's going to be a lasting effect for something that's just going to be for a little while you have to think through those things right so Getting a new job is going to remove the immediate pain, but you don't know what, what is coming with that new job. It might be other kinds of pains. Right? You can't just jump every time you have a problem. So that's the benefit, though, of quitting, that you get rid of the pain that you're feeling right now. Um, you get a pay hike. The best way to improve your salary is to jump jobs, to switch jobs. Because if you stay in your, new, your regular job, the job that you have now, even if you get a bonus or you get some kind of commission, even sometimes when you get a promotion, you don't get the same amount of pay like you get when you switch to a new job. So switching to a new job is the best way to get a bigger chunk of pay raise. When you switch to a new job, you learn something new. Obviously, it's a new company, it's a new environment, probably new feature, new system, new everything. So you learn new things. And the more new things that you learn, you just continually you know, improve and you grow in your career because you can now say you've worked here, you've worked here, you've worked in this industry and that industry. And so you kind of have that breadth of, of experience that you can use for your advantage when you, when you finally go to another job eventually. But, you know, right now when you switch to a new job, you really gain some new knowledge and that's always good. So no job is forever, 
right? You're not saying that you're gonna get a job and you're gonna be there like 30, 40 years. Nobody, nobody's doing that anymore. People are definitely switching. It's just, you gotta be strategic. You gotta make sure you switch and you, you quit your job in a structured way, right? So what's the benefit of quitting? I just talked about that. What's the benefit of staying? Obviously, you're staying because you're used to the environment. You know the people, you know the process, you know what you're working in. You're already familiar, so you don't have to take the challenge of learning something new and going up another learning curve. And the the other benefit of staying is that you build your reputation when you stay. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you have adversity and you have these challenges and you have these problems and you just stay and you stick with it and you get to the end, especially when the end is an improved process and a better workflow and everything's going well, then you kind of show longevity, you show commitment, you show that you can go through hard times with this company and stick with them and not abandon them like other people have, right? So you really show that endurance and that endurance tends to have additional benefits. So it just helps you build character. It helps your character to be stronger, to deal with more adversity. So as adversity come and you work through them, you learn about that for the next adversity and you work through that. And so you become resilient. You become resilient and you know how to handle problems going forward because problems are going to come when you go to a new job anyway. So running away from the, the problem is not really the best thing. It's also sometimes working through it and making sure that you can actually overcome it and when you do that you actually get a lot of props from your co-workers and from your management team even though they may not say it to you they saw that you stuck through it when everybody else was gone right so it does have its benefits that way it also depends on what type of problem obviously some things you're not you're like i'm not even gonna try like no that's not <laughs> i'm not even gonna try to work through this i'm out of here and that's you know it depends on what the problem is when you stay at a job you become the expert so the longer you're there, the more you know, because especially as a business analyst, you're going to be developing new features, new processes. You're going to know how these things work and you become the expert that people are going to come to for advice. And that's valuable. When you stay at the job, you also help your personal finances. So when you stay there, if you're coming up on any big purchases like house or car or land or whatever, or any big purchases that you're coming up with, your source of income is going to be scrutinized. And if you have a job for a longer period of time, that's going to help you when it comes to your finances. So it really does help your personal finances if you were to stay at the job. So if you know you're coming up on a big purchase, maybe now is not the right time to quit. The other thing too is what is your goal? I talked about it just now, but if you have a goal, if you stay at the job, then you already have that kind of settled and you can focus a lot on the goal that you're trying to accomplish in the next, in the near future. But if you're switching jobs and you quit the job, then you have to be focused on finding a new job, sending out those applications, doing those interviews, and that kind of distracts from the goal that you're trying to accomplish. And then when you do get the new job, you have to fight, you know, work on doing well in the job and keeping the job and learning all the stuff and doing all that stuff so you kind of distract from what you're trying to do which is your end goal so make sure that if you're switching the job and you really have to quit then you know you know it's going to impact where you're trying to go so make sure you evaluate that as well the other thing too is that when you stay at the job you even though you have problems with your management team and all that stuff at least you know they know you and you know them the problems that you're having, um, at least you know what the problems are, right? When you switch to a new job, you have to prove yourself again to a new set of people. And so you got to work a little bit harder to prove to build that reputation again. And you don't know who you're dealing with, so you got to figure that out too. So that's with quitting that you don't have if you stay. So in both cases, quitting the job or staying, there's uncertainty. You, you can't know exactly what's going to happen in the new job. You can't know exactly if you stay in the old job, if it's going to get better. So there's uncertainty on both sides. So that's why I say you have to really think through this. And I hope that I gave you some points to think through. Um, so you don't make a rash decision and don't just like get mad and send a mad email and be like, I'm done with you guys. Uh, uh, quit. <laughs> don't, don't do it.
<laughs> don't do it at all. Just don't do it. Right? It's never. I laugh about it because sometimes I, I made a video and I gave an example in that video when I was mad at something at work and I wrote a very angry email. And I was like banging on the keys and I look back at that person. I was like, who is that person? I wish I had me now to tell me then not to do that. Don't do that. Don't send angry emails at work. Just don't do it. And if you have to quit, you must quit graciously. You have to quit with grace. You have to give your employers enough time to find your replacement, at least two weeks. You you have to tell your bosses who you report to that you're going to quit before you tell your coworkers. You have to make sure you don't say bad things, don't send angry emails, you know, give everybody like a nice farewell message, but don't be like blaming nobody in there. You can't quit with any kind of anger around you because that's the last memory they'll have of you. You don't want to leave with that bad you know, impression of you. You don't want to do that. And if you even have an exit interview, because some companies do exit interviews, you can give constructive criticism, but don't go in there trying to lay the blame on everybody else but yourself. Okay. You must quit with grace if you're going to quit, because that's what is a professional thing to do. And remember, you're above average, valuable professional analytical. I mean, I can't remember the order, but you're above average, valuable, analytical, professional. And so you're going to do all these things in the right way. So there you have it. Don't be a hater. Be thankful. Don't be a hater. Be thankful when you quit, if you quit. So this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I hope I gave you some food for thought in this video. Um, I think there's a lot of merit to staying and not making a rash decision to quit. But if you have to quit, quit with grace. And I wish you all the best in the new job when you find it, or if you've already found it on your way out, I wish you all the best when you start that new job. And I have a video, actually, <laughs> put it here, about what to do when you start your new job. So go watch that as well. But I wanted to give you this little motivational piece because, you know, this is a challenge that people have and they struggle with this a lot. And everybody's thinking about this. Nobody wants to talk about it. So I thought it might be useful to talk about it. And I hope I gave you... Um, enough information to cause you to pause and think through this. And I really wish for you to have all the best. You know, I wish success to everybody who follows me and watches my video. And I want to give you the motivation that you may not even get from your family or even from your coworkers. But I want you to know that you're a valuable person. You're a valuable business analyst and you're bringing a lot to the table. And anywhere you go to work, they're going to have to see that value. Okay. So thank you guys. This is all I have for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.